Hi everyone. Um, it is August like 3rd or 4th and I wanted to tell you about the books that I read in July. This summer is going so fast. We are five months away from 2022. Thinking about that makes me feel motion sickness and I move to another country in less than a month. So <laughs> um, there's a lot happening and I had thought I hadn't really read that much this month because in my mind everything was like focused on packing and yada 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 but in actuality I still read eight books which is pretty good so um without further ado let's get started um first of all and this is just a real quick one um I read Herbal Teas for Lifelong Health by Kathleen Brown just because I've been kind of getting into a little bit of herbalism since I'm like a, a kooky hippie um so there was some cool like teas in here that I was like interested in trying out. Um, next, y'all are gonna lose your mind. Um, the Voyager's Motel by Gay Talese. Now, um, the reason that I was interested in this book is because I had watched the documentary. So this is a nonfiction book based on this really, really famous writer reporter named Gay Talese. Um, and he did some books like in the 80s or 90s, I think, about like nudist communes and like polyamory and so this guy wrote to him about how he had rigged a motel to be able to like watch people have sex in and this is like the true story of gay till he's actually becoming friends with this like perv um so it's interesting i th i personally I think that Gay Tilly's is a shitty journalist and a shitty person, and Gerald Foos, which is the name of the voyeur, um, is an awful pervert, but it was still really interesting just to see, um, you know, what all the hype was about, because there was a time where Gay Tilly's was, like, a huge, um, like, figurehead in the United States, so, I guess, how the, the mighty fall, I suppose. <laughs> Next, I read... Sweet Dark by Savannah Brown. This is her second poetry collection. Um, I have read and loved her previous books and poetry collections. And this one, I just want to read you a few lines because I'm not me if I'm not reading you a few lines. So I'm not gonna read you the whole thing. Um, just like a few sentences so you can get like a little taste because I would hate for you to not go out and purchase her book to support her as an artist. This is a little teeny section from the Parakeets which fly in Greenwich Park. Lately I think mainly of my own hollow bones. Maybe I'm more feral than I figured. Cherry flesh ripe, my instinct the pit. I'll let this life strip me out like a sky. Remember even the sun wants us dead. So worried about belonging and we're all tangled in the celestial root. Chaos wants for no one but I was released and for a time survived. Oh! Um, and then in her other, another poem called Low Level Annihilation, I want to make something with only my mind that glows well enough to warm you. Catch me crying in the club! <laughs> Next, I read The Missing by Margaret Peterson Haddix. Um, Margaret Peterson Haddix is the queen of YA literature. This is the fifth book in the Missing series, and as a kid I was obsessed with it. Um, the concept is basically that all of the missing children throughout history were stolen by time travelers from the future and taken back so that people in like the 22nd century um can have like kids who are like genetic genetically like albert einstein's or one of the romanovs um this one was about albert einstein and i just i'm not going to tell you anything else because i don't want to spoil it but i recommend reading the whole series it's just First of all, so spectacularly written, so well researched, very suspenseful. I and uh, you learn a lot about um, each period. There's like a couple, I think maybe six of these books, and they're all set in wildly different periods. So I highly recommend all of them, and honestly, everything else that Margaret Peterson Haddix has ever written. Next, um, I read Sandcastle by Pierre Oscar Levy. Um, this is a graphic novel. Uh, so I saw Old by M. Night Shyamalan. And this is the graphic novel it was based off of. Um, and this has more weird children's sex stuff than, than the film and far more than I like to see in anything. Um, 
very it a la Stephen King for me which you know it is one of my favorite books but even then Stephen was really pushing it um but it was still very cool to see the origin of the film um and if you haven't seen the film yet I do recommend that as well I hadn't stopped thinking about it and I saw it like a month ago next I read Love Warrior by Glennon Doyle this book was recommended to me by my therapist <laughs> um there was more religion discussion in it than I typically enjoy in my books um but the writing of it is beautiful and I also had me thinking very deeply about relationships I say as a single person um but like about what we expect out of someone versus what we can allow ourselves to expect and about seeing people as who they truly are versus like making them into something um and also i mean trigger warning for discussions of addiction and bulimia um but she really handled those topics with grace as well so i don't know if i would recommend it but i did i enjoyed it um it was just a quick little audiobook fun little thing fun isn't the right word it was a quick little interesting thing next i read the journals of sylvia plath um, this is a reread for me. I actually read these for the first time my freshman year of college and I hate to be this person but sometimes like some of these lines I see these little glimmers of myself and I don't like it because I honestly think that Sylvia Plath was a jerk. Um, I think that she was really egotistical. I think that she thought a lot of herself and I think for me the problem is that I see a lot of her flaws, um, her obsession with like work, um, her desire to make something to like compensate for existence. Those are all traits that I see a lot of myself um, in. So I think that's why I enjoyed it. Obviously depressing as hell. Um, also towards the end um, she obviously Sylvia Plath died of suicide at age 30. Um, and towards the end of this journal, she stops writing, like, journal entries, um, and it's all work notes for the stuff that she's writing. And there was this line at the end, um, because it was annotated by Ted Hughes and Francis McCullough, which, you know, Ted Hughes is an asshole. But, um, there was this line where this journal indicates that Sylvia died much earlier than she actually did. And that has just stuck with me. So if you have any interest in Sylvia Plath, um, I love reading the journals of authors. Um, I just think it's super interesting seeing how they express themselves in this very intimate and personal way. Um, and honestly, some actually for sure, my favorite pieces of writing from Sylvia Plath come from this journal. So if you like Sylvia, I recommend. Finally, I read The Color Purple by Alice Walker. Um, I had been putting reading this off for ages because for some reason I thought it was a play. I think it was because that there's a musical they made of it, which having now read it, I'm wondering how they did that because my man, <laughs> so sad, so sad. Um, so it's an epistolary novel of sorts. It starts out being written to God, but over time it becomes something else. Um, which was super cool and this is obviously like a queer classic so um, those are the books that I read in the month of July um, so I hope y'all are doing well uh, like comment subscribe and I'll see you very soon bye